Praise God. Amen. Let's go to verse 19, 319. Twende warumi mlango wa 3:19. Warumi 3:19 inasema, basi twajua ya kuwa mambo yote inenayo torati huyanena kwa hao walio chini ya torati. Ili kila kinywa kifumbwe na ulimwengu wote uwe chini ya hukumu ya Mungu. Open your eyes, open your eyes. Safungua macho yako sasa. Tell your mind to allow you to hear and, and understand. Ambia mwaza yako niruhusu nisikie na nielewe. Verse 19 says now we know. Mstari wa 19 unasema kwamba sasa tuwajua. That whatever the law says it says to those who are under the law. Kwamba mambo yote inanao torati huyanena kwa wale walio chini ya torati. So that's who are being ruled by the power and authority of the law. Ni wale ambao wanaongozwa na kumilikiwa na sheria. We'll come back to that. Tarudi kwa hiyo. Why does the law speak then? Kwa nini sheria inaongea sasa? That every mouth may be stopped. Ili kwamba kila mdomo na ukazimwe and the entire world may become guilty before God. Na ulimwengu wote uwe chini ya hukumu ya Mungu. Why does God want a guilty world? Kwa nini Mungu anataka ulimwengu ulio chini ya hukumu? So number one, kwanza, the law says what it says. Sheria husema kile inachosema. That every mouth may be stopped. Kwamba kila kinywa kifumbwe. Now listen to me. Sikiza, sikiza vizuri. If you went before a judge, kama ulienda mbele ya hakimu, because you have committed a crime, kwa sababu umefanya kosa, and the charges are read, na basi mashtaka yanasomwa, and you find out that there's nothing you can say, na unapata kwamba hakina kitu naweza sema, because the judge has the charges, kwa sababu uh, judge ya hakimu ako na mashtaka, has the evidence, ako na ushahidi, and he has the power to convict you, ako na uwezo wa kuweza kukuhukumu, do you start arguing I didn't do it? basi utaanza kumwambia mimi judge sikufanya hiyo, you shut up unanyamaza kabisa because you know i am guilty kwa sababu unajua mimi niko na hatia so the bible says ile inasema kwamba the purpose of the law kusudi ya sheria was to make everyone ilikuwa ni kufanya kila mmoja both jews and gentiles wayahudi na wayunani to shut up and stop bragging before god wazime midomo yao na wache kiburi mbele ya mungu number 2 ya pili was to make both jews and gentiles ilikuwa ni kufanya wote wayahudi na wayunani to accept wakubali that they are guilty kwamba wana hatia and they are standing before a righteous judge. Na kwamba wanasimama mbele ya hakimu mwenye haki. Guilty sinners standing before a righteous God. Basi wenye dhambi walio na hatia wakisimama mbele ya Mungu mwenye haki. Look at verse 20. Go to verse 20. I'll move a little bit quickly because of time. Jaribu kusonga kwa sababu ya muda. Kwa sababu hakuna mwenye mwili atakaye hesabiwa haki mbele zake kwa matendo ya sheria. Kwa maana kutambua dhambi Huja kwa njia ya sheria. Wow. You, you need to touch yourself. Will you touch yourself? Jiguze vizuri. Uwane kama ukona mwili. Uwane kama ukona mwili tafadhali. Ukona mwili? Yeah. Bisho ukona mwili? Ukona mwili. Bibliya sema ati hakuna mwenye. Maanika sema kwamba hakuna mwenye mwili. Therefore by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Kwa sababu hakuna mwenye mwili atakaye sabiwa haki mbele zake kwa matendo ya sheria kwa maana kutambua dhambi huja kwa njia ya sheria. Follow me. Nifuate. This is what the Bible is saying. Hivi ndivyo Biblia inasema. There is nothing in the law of Moses. Hakuna kitu katika sheria ya Musa that you can do. Ambao unaweza kufanya and stand before God. Na usimama mbele ya Mungu. And God says you are good. Na Mungu aseme wewe ni mzuri. The law of Moses sheria ya Musa came to reveal to you ilikuja kukufunulia that, that which God is asking you to do kwamba kila Mungu anachokuuliza ufanye is beyond your ability to do ni zaidi ya uwezo wako kufanya I want that to be so clear ningependa hiyo ikuwe wazi the purpose of the law of Moses kusudi ya sheria ya Musa is to reveal to you ni kukufunulia wewe that you have no human ability kwamba hauna ule uwezo wa kibinadamu to please God kumpendeza Mungu you have no human ability hauna uwezo wa kibinadamu through your performance kupitia matendo yako through your works kupitia kazi zako to receive the approval of God kupokea kule kukubarika na Mungu the, the purpose of the law kusudi la sheria was to make you understand ili kukusaidia uelewe that in all you are doing kwamba katika matendo yako yote you are too weak wewe ni mdhaifu to reach the righteous standards of God. Ufika katika kiwango cha haki ya Mungu. What God wants of man is too high. Kila Mungu anataka kutoka kwa mwanadamu iko juu sana. There's no man who can achieve it. Na hakuna mwanadamu angeweza kufikia. By observing the law of Moses. Kwa kuitizama na kuifuata sheria ya Musa. And the nation of Israel. Na taifa la Israeli. Is the example. Ni mfano. That they were given the law of Moses. Kwamba walipewa sheria ya Musa. They were given the prophets. Walipewa unabii. They were given the kings. Walipewa wafalme. They were given the priesthood. Walipewa ukuhani. But 
all that never helped them to please God. Never helped them. In, in verse 9 we discovered all of them the nation of Israel and the Gentiles all of them they are under the power and authority of sin. If the Lord save then Israel will have been saved by the Lord Jesus. So let's do it. Exodus 19. I speak to you as I hear God direct me. Let's go my brother verse 3. Mstari wa 3. Kutoka 19 mstari wa 3 inasema Musa akapanda kwa Mungu na Bwana akamuita toka mlima ule akisema utaambia nyumba ya Yakobo na kuarifu wana wa Israeli maneno haya. Verse 4. Maona jinzi nilivyo watendea wa Misri na jinzi nilivyo wachukua ninyi juu ya mbawa za tai nikawaleta ninyi kwangu mimi So God calls Moses unto himself Mungu akamuita Musa aje kwake and at that time the children of Israel were camping at Mount Sinai Wakati ule basi wana Israeli walikuwa wameweka hema and God tells Moses, I want to send you to my people, the nation of Israel. Go and tell them. So from verse 3, you need to know who was sent and to whom he was sent to. Look at verse 3. God is sending Moses. So Moses is the apostle of God at that time. And he's being sent to the nation of Israel, to the children of Israel, the house of Jacob. So God is the one with the message. Moses is the messenger. And Moses is being sent to the house of Jacob. Na Musa ametumwa kwa nyumba ya Yakobo. The children of Israel. Wana wa Israeli. You know that's the same name uh, because Jacob became Israel when he fought with them. Unajua hiyo ni sawa tu kwa sababu Yakobo alipongangana na malaika akaitwa jina Israel. The house of Jacob. Nyumba ya Yakobo. The children of Israel. Na wana wa Israel. Is a way that the Holy Spirit is insisting. Ni vile tu Roho Mtakatifu anasisitiza. This matter is only for a group of people. Hii mambo ni ya watu tu fulani. Not everyone. Sio kila mmoja. It's an emphasis. Basi hii ni mkazo. So verse 4. He says, go to them. Enenda kwao. Tell them like this. Waambia hivi. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Mumewana jinsi nilivyo watendea wa misri. Let's stop there. Mwame hapa kidogo. Do you think there was a Kenyan in Egypt at that time? Wanafikiria hapo katika imisri kulikuwa na mkenya. Were there Kenyans there? Kulikuwa na wakikuyu. Were there Americans there? Kulikuwa na hatu kutoka Amerika. Who are there? The Jewish people. You have seen what I've did in, to you in Egypt. And how I carried you on eagle's wings. Now, I like the last part. And brought you to myself. So hear this. For 400 years. The nation of Israel was being made in Egypt. In due time, God delivered it from Egypt. And there was the Egyptian captivity which was very cruel. The Egyptian captivity was cruel. But God delivered them through many miracles. Kupitia miujiza mingi and he said he brought them to himself. But look at the words the Bible is using. I bore you on eagle's wings. In other words, you were weak. You had no power to help yourself. You didn't even know how to run away from Egypt. You didn't even know that you need to You didn't even know that you need to leave Egypt. You didn't even know that you need to You didn't even know that you need to leave Egypt. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egyptians. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egyptians. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egyptians. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egyptians. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egyptians. I came to you and did for you what I did to the Egy
I came to you kwenyu, and did for you nyenye, that which you could never do for yourself. Something that was impossible and beyond your ability. Kitu I carried you on eagle's wings. Juu ya mabawa ya tai. What God is telling them, Nini mungu you didn't apa. pray for me to come and do that. You didn't hili. give me offerings for me to do that. Zaka it's not because of your goodness. Siku you are not serving me for me to come and deliver you. It is because of my goodness and I delivered you out of Egypt. And it's because of my own goodness. It's because of my power. It's because of my plan. It's because of my sovereignty. That I came and carried you out of Egypt. Not because you asked me. If you could have asked the children of Israel. They would have wanted to stay in Egypt. Even in the wilderness. They said we want to go back. How many of us here, after God has saved you, you go and play with sin again? They wanted to go back. God is telling them, I am the one who brought you here. I didn't ask you for anything. I just did it. Out of my own grace. Out of my own kindness. It was my mercy. My compassion. I saw you suffering in Egypt. I came to deliver you. And I brought you to myself. I love that. Where they were was to God. Where God is. I have brought you to myself. What other better place will you want? Now he tells them, is it possible that we change the way we deal with one another? I want to change, but you have to sign. Five to eight. Sasa basi, ikiwa mtaiti sauti yangu kweli kweli, na kulishika agano langu. Hapo dipo, mutakapokuwa tunu kwangu, kuliko makabila yote ya watu, Maana dunia yote pia ni mali yangu. Nanyi mutakuwa kwangu ufalme wa makuhani na taifa takatifu. Hayo ndiyo maneno utakayo wambia wana wa Israeli. Saba. Musa akaenda akawaita wazee wa watu. Akawafunulia maneno hayo yote. Bwana aliyokuwa amemwagiza. Watu wote wakaitika pamoja. Wakisema hayo yote Alio ya sema buwana, tutayatenda, tutayatenda. Nae Musa, haka muambia buwana, maneno ya hao watu. So let's go slowly. Verse 5. Istari watano. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Sasa basi, ikiwa mutaiti sauti yangu, Kweli kweli na kulishika agano langu hapo ndipo mtakapokuwa tunu kwangu kuliko makabila yote ya watu maana dunia yote pia ni mali yangu God tells Moses Mungu anamwambia Musa Go and tell the children of Israel Enda waambie wana wa Israeli I have been ministering to them Nimekuwa nikiwahudumia I have been serving them Nimekuwa nikiwatumikia I have been blessing them Nimekuwa nikiwabariki without any condition Pasipo sharti hata moja But I think we should change the way we Lakini nafikiri ni vizuri tubadilishe huo mtisamo I want to start blessing them on conditions Nataka niwabariki kwa masharti and two conditions. Na mashalti mawiri. Number one. Ya kwanza. I'll give them a covenant. Nita wapatia gano. They must observe it to the letter. Lazima waifuatilie hadi mwisho. I'll give them a covenant. Nita wapatia gano. They must observe it. Lazima waiti. Number two. La pili. I'll speak to them through the prophets. Nita wangia na wawo kupitia nabi. And whatever I say to them through the prophets. Na chuchota ndia kupitia nabi. They must do. Lazima na wakati. They must obey. Lazima na wakati. And he says. Akasema, Go and tell them on one hand. Enda wambia kwa mkono moja. These are the two conditions. Ha, haya ndiyo mashalti mawili. On the other hand. Na upande mwingine. These are the blessings. Hizi ni baraka. They shall be a special treasure for me. Basi ya mutakuwa ni watu wa peke, peke kwa mwini. Above all people. Juu ya watu wote. So Israel was chosen as a special nation. Kwa hivyo Israel ikachagudua kama taifa teule la kipeke. And was given an opportunity to be a special treasure unto God. Na ikapekewa na panafasi ya kuwa nafasi nzuri sana kwa mungu. I don't know if you can understand treasure. 
Treasure means that they will be the people that God will value the most on earth. But it's conditional. Remember that. God will give them a covenant. They must, must observe the entire covenant. Then God will speak to them through the prophets. They must obey the voice of God through the prophets. God says, if you achieve these two things, you will be the most valuable people to me on earth. Because all the earth is mine. Kwa sababu, watu wote na huu Verse ni 6 it says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you will speak to the children of Israel. Nanyi mtakuwa kwangu ufalme wa makuhani na taifa takatifu. Hayo ndiyo maneno utakaya wambia wana wa Israeli. So Israel is being promised four things. Israeli wameahidi wa mambo mane. Listen carefully. Iskizi hapa. If you listen to what the prophets are saying, if you observe my covenant, I, the Lord, will bless you in this way. Number one, you will be the most valuable nation on planet Earth. Number two, you will be a nation where all the kings of the Earth will come from. Number three, you will be a nation where all the priests of the Earth will come from. Then you will be a nation that is separated unto God and God alone. Separated unto God and God alone. So Israel has the promise and has the condition. Moses goes to the through, he calls the elders. He tells them, I've been with God. And God has spoken. And this is what God has spoken. And the elders listen. When you hear the elders of Israel, Alex Well says, Wazewa watu. From the 12 tribes of Israel, the elders were called. Then Moses spoke to them. Musa akawaita. They told Moses, Musa, what are you waiting for? Tell God we are ready. That, that carrying us on eagle's wing, now we don't want. Let him give us a covenant. We will observe it. Let him speak to us through the prophets. We will obey it. And God went back, Moses went back to God and said, they have accepted. So I want you to hear this. The first covenant between the no, the, the covenant of the law between nation, the nation of Israel and God was discussed and agreed between God and the nation of Israel Moses being the mediator. You get it? Moses was the mediator. So let's go first. But carry this in your mind. It's called a conditional promise. If you do it, I will do it. If you don't, I will not. So let's go first. Jeremiah 31. Verse 31. Jeremiah 31. Angalia Siku zinakuja, asema bwana itakapofanya agano jipya na nyumba ya Israeli. Goja kidogo. Agano jipya na na nani? Nyumba. Ah, soma, oh, kusikia vizuri. Soma tena. Angalia siku zinakuja, asema bwana itakapofanya agano jipya na nyumba ya Israeli. Aha. Na nyumba ya Yuda. Aha. Si kwa mfano wa agano lile Nilo lifanya na baba zao. Siku gani? Katika siku ile nilipo washika mikono, mkono uh -huh. 
ili kuwatoa katika inji ya Misri uh -huh. ambalo agano langu hilo walilivunja ingawa nalikuwa mme kwao asema Bwana Amen In the law of Moses Katika torati ya Musa if you broke the law ukivunja sheria there was a punishment for breaking the law Kulikuwa na adhabu kwa sababu ya kuvunja sheria So there was a punishment for breaking the law. Kulikuwa na adhabu kwa sababu ya kuvunja sheria. The punishment of breaking the law. Adhabu ya kuvunja sheria was called the curse of the law. Ilikuwa inaitwa laana ya sheria. Write in your notes. Andika katika The punishment for breaking the law was called the curse of the law. Adhabu ya kuvunja sheria ilikuwa inaitwa laana ya sheria. That's why if you don't do this, ndio maana usipofanya hivi Will be, that this will be done to you. If you want to understand the curse of the law, go home and read the book of Deuteronomy 28. You will see the curse of the law. There. What will happen to you if you do something wrong? If you break the law of Moses. So in Jeremiah 31 God says behold the days are coming So it was not during the time of Jeremiah Days are coming And God says In those days I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah Kwamba katika hizo siku nitakapofanya agano jipya na nyumba ya Israeli na nyumba ya Yuda I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel again. There's something he says after that. Yeah. What's an NIV Bible here? Read for us. What does, it, what does that verse say? It will not be like the covenant I made with their father, poor fathers. So there's a new covenant that God is promising to the nation of Israel but he's saying it will not be like Kwa hivyo kuna agano jipya ambao Mungu anaahidi wana Israeli na anasema kwamba si kwa mfano wa ile ya kwanza Sio kama ile ya kwanza ndio So does that mean Kwa hivyo inamaanisha aje hiyo A time was coming Wakati ulikuwa uje when God will do away with the law of Moses Wakati Mungu alikuwa aweke kando sheria ya Musa and come up with a new law Na, uh, Does that mean so? From that statement. The time is coming, clears the law, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. Uh -huh. It will not be like the covenant I made with your forefathers. When? When I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though i was a husband to them mm -hmm. so he's saying anasema it's okay pastor when when they were at mount sinai walipokuwa pale mlima sinai he gave the children of israel a covenant aliwapa wana israeli agano a conditional blessing na pia baraka zilizokuwa na sharti but they have broken them lakini wamezivunja they have not kept them hawajahifadhi let me just touch on how the covenant was supposed to be observed. Just a dog good. Because sometimes you go to a hotel and get a buffet. Different kinds of food. Uh, like yesterday we had a buffet in this. You pick what you want. So you look, say chicken, huku, Siti kienyeji or broiler. Hii ni ni ile ni ile ya upepo ama ni ya kawaida. Mimi I love kienyeji I not eat that. Mimi napenda kienyeji sipendi hiyo. Hizo ugali? Hii ni ugali. I eat this. Waacha ni kule hii. This this kuma week no I don't like kuma week. Sukuma nayo acha nayo. So you pick what you love. Unachukua kile unapenda and eat. Na unakula. And the church things na the church. Na kanisa things that the law of Moses was like a buffet. Haya. Kanisa ufikiria ati kwamba sheria ya Musa ilikuwa ni kama hiyo maandalizi ya chakula ina tofauti mingi kwa meza. You say uh, unasema this one is not good. Hii si nzuri. This one is good. Hii ni mzuri. It's good for the church. Hii ni mzuri kwa kanisa. This one inayo. Eh? Na ile. Uh. The law of Moses was like a chain. Sheria ya Musa ilikuwa kama nyororo. 
If I want to lock this door with a powerful chain, it has a thousand links. And let me use the exact links. 613 links. Then I tie this door with that chain. Put a powerful padlock. How many links do I need to break for the chain to be useless? Just one. Read for us James chapter 2 verse 10. Angalia kitabu cha Yakobo mbili mstari wa 10. Maana mtu awae yote atakaye shika sheria yote ili akajikwa katika neno moja amekosa juu ya yote. Kweli? Eh. Maana mtu awae yote atakaye shika sheria yote Mm-hmm. ila akajikwa katika neno moja uh-huh. amekosa juu ya yote James 2 verse 10 inasema hivi for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it hey, this was a difficult thing eh hii ilikuwa ni ngumu now let me tell you. You have been given 613 laws to follow. Umepewa sheria takribani 613 uweze kuhifadhi. You keep the whole law. Na unahifadhi yote. But break only one. Lakini unavunja tu mmoja. How many laws have you broken? Umevunja ngapi? All. Umevunja yote. So how many laws do you need to break for you to have broken the law? Basi unafaa kuvunja sheria ngapi ili uko umevunja sheria? But the challenge was this. Lakini sasa changamoto ilikuwa ni hii. It was keep the whole law. Ilikuwa uhifadhi sheria yote. Keep it throughout your life on earth. Maisha yako yote uhifadhi sheria. Without breaking one. Pasipo kuvunja hata moja. Keep the whole law. Uhifadhi sheria yote. Keep it throughout your life on earth. Na ufanye hivyo maisha yako yote hapa ni mwanguni. Without breaking one. Pasipo kuvunja hata moja. Let's just try to look at the law a little. Let's look at, look at the 10 commandments. Wacha tuangalie kidogo tuangalie kama hizo amri 10. We know the 10 commandments. Twazijua amri 10. Who can tell me one? One of the 10 commandments. Nani anaweza kunitajia tu moja ya hizo amri 10? Usiue. Ndio. Now Jesus Yesu comes to interpret that to us. Anakuja kutafsiri hiyo kwetu that whoever hates the a brother kwamba huyu ambaye anayemchukia ndugu yake is worse than a murderer. He has already murdered, isn't it? He already has So let's say this. God tells us, those of us who are here, Mungu atuambia, zi ambao tuko hapa, and let's be honest, na hebu tukwetu ni wakweli, because we say the Lord removes pride from us. Sama kwamba Mungu wandua kiburi kwetu. God tells us, those who are here, Mungu atuambia, zi ambao tuko hapa, you have only one law to keep. Ukwana sharia moja ya kuhifadhi. Do not murder. Usiwe. Usiwe. From the time you are born, tangu uzaliwe, the time you die, hadi siku itakapo kufa, don't kill. Usiwe. But Jesus now comes to interpret for you what God meant. Yes, anakuja na kuambia sasa vile Mungu alivyo na makuwa na maanisha. Don't hate a brother. Usimchukie ndugu. Because if you hate a brother, kwa sababu ukimchukia ndugu, you are already murdered. Umemuua. How many of us will go to heaven? Ni wangapi wataenda mbinguni? Now we talk on your behalf. Wewe wangaye tu kwa niaba yako. There are people here who have never hated anybody. Kuna watu hapo hajai chukia mtu. Because it. You have invited me to preach to murderers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the danger of the law. If you want to keep the law, there is the principle of keeping the law. Keep the entire law. Keep it your entire life without breaking one. If you live up to 100 years and you will die at 100 years and one day and for 100 years you kept the law and just before you die you break one law and all your 100 years there has been a waste. That's the law of Moses. But that's the way the law is kept. Bishop has been driving for 50 years. 
And now he knocked someone on the road. So he's taken to the, uh, to the courtroom. He's being accused by, of, of knocking someone on the road. And he says, Judge, I've been driving for 50 years. I've only knocked one man. Can he be acquitted? He'll be punished. That's how the law works. It doesn't matter how long you have been good. If you break one, you have spoiled everything. Now, in your own thinking, do you think the nation of Israel could have kept the law? Do you think there's a church that can keep the law today? Now, let me show you the danger of trying to keep the law. First Corinthians 15. Verse 1. Verse 1. Paul the apostle. Lakini Mungu na ashukuriwe atupae kushinda kwa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Mm-hmm. Baadhi ndugu zangu wapendwa. Muimarike, msitikisike, mkasidi sana kutenda kazi ya Bwana siku zote kwa kuwa mwajua ya kwamba taabu yenu sio bure katika Bwana. The sting of death is sin. The stink of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, give us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That all people die today because of sin. Because of the sin that was committed by Adam in the Garden of Eden. When God said the day you eat of this tree you will surely die. So because of that original sin and the continual personal sins people are dying. So every time you bury a loved one remember Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Kumbuka kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wa pili mstari wa 17. God said the day you eat of this tree you will surely die. Wakati Mungu alisema kwamba siku ile utakula kutoka kwa huu mti hakika na utakufa. And man actually rebelled against God. And he ate from that tree. And the word of God came true. Man dies. Although in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible is talking about both spiritual death and physical death. But physical death up to today is because of sin. So, the stink of death is what? Sin. The stink of death is sin. And for sin to have power over you, there must be the law of Moses. I know that one is a hard one. Najua, iyo ngumu, but it's found in the Bible. Iko kwa and once it's found in the Bible, na, kwa Biblia, this is how we say it. Even if, what isema, if God has said it, kama Mungu isema, I believe it. Mimi na yamini, and that brings everything to rest. As long as God has said it, please believe it. And bring everything to rest. If you look at that, uh, that place, we'll come to verse 57. We'll come to it later, which says, but thanks be to God, who has given us victory over sin and death through Christ Jesus. But the Stink of death is sin. The power power of sin is the law. Now let me show you one of the greatest men in the Bible how he cried about the law. 
Nikwambie kuhusu watu wakuu katika Biblia vile walivyolia kwa sababu ya sheria. Romans chapter 7. Warumi mlango wa 7. Romans chapter 7. Let's pick it from verse 7. Mlango Warumi mlango wa 7 kuanzia mstari wa 7. Inasema mm. Tusemeje basi? Mm. Torati ni dhambi? Hasha. Walakini singalitambua dhambi ila kwa sheria. Kwa kuwa singalijua kutamani kama torati isinga lisema usitamani Let's hold on there. We, hapo. we have a fallen nature right from adam tuko na asili ambayo imeanguka tangu wakati wa adam and what the law was doing na kile ambacho sheria ilikuwa nafanya is to tell our fallen nature ni kuambia asili iliyoanguka don't do what you do naturally usifanye kile unachofanya katika kiali ya asili don't covet wacha kutamani and naturally Na katika asli, we are covetous people. Naturally. I, iyo ni kawaida. Every single human being in the world. Kila wanadamu katika ulimwengu. Even all of us who are here. Ata si utambotu kwa hapa. Naturally without Christ Jesus. Kawaida bila Christo. We are covetous people. Watu wa kutamani. So it does not matter. Baibu haijalishi. How hard the law hits you. Ni ime kukonga kiasi kipi shalia. Don't covet. Usitamani. Don't covet. Usitamani. The more it tells you don't covet. Kile nadi ukukumbusha wacha kutamani. The more the flesh tells you do it. Hivyo ndivyo mwini na kuambia jaribu yo kitu. When you are growing up. Wakati ripokuwa na kuwa, during your teenage wakati wa umuli wako wa, wa ujana those things that your father told you don't do it yale mambo ambayo baba yako alikwambia usifanye they are the things that you did hayo ndio mambo ulifanya okay me i'm talking about myself not you asikofu akiwa kijana alifanya hivyo asemi kuhusu wewe if my mother told me don't do this kama mango aliniambia usifanye hivi then that i'll do hivyo ndivyo niliende kufanya we have a nature Tuko na asili that is naturally rebellious against God. Ambao katika kiasili yake ni kuenda tu ni kuasi dhidi ya Mungu. We don't need anything. Atu, we don't need any any, any atu, instructions. Atuitaji ma atuitaji um uh, maagizo mengine. Bishop. Nobody teaches a man how to sin. Hakuna mtu ufundisha wanadamu jinsi ya kufanya dhambi. We were born sinners naturally. Tulizaliwa tukiwa na dhambi kiasri. And the pa- bad part of it. Na sahimu ile mbaya hiyo. This flesh enjoys sin. Ni huu mwili wa dhambi. Until we bring this flesh to death. Bali hadi utakapoleta mwili katika mauti. The body enjoys sin. Basi mwili unafurahia sana kuogelea katika dhambi. So Paul says, Paul nasema, I was okay. Mimi ni kwa sawa. But when the Lord told me, wakati sheria niambia, don't covet. Wacha kutamani. My flesh says, na umeruka kusema, now I found something to do. Sasa nimepata kitu ya kufanya. Continue, continue. Mstari wa 8. Mm-hmm. Lakini dhambi ilipata nafasi kwa ile amri. Ikafanya ndani yangu kila namna ya kutamani. Kwa maana dhambi bila sheria imekufa. Kama sheria ya Musa haiko dhambi kwa namna gani? Imekufa. Hebu nadanganya. Nataka tusikia pasi anasema hiyo hiyo. What shall we say? Mm-hmm. Then is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed I would not have known what sin was except through the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said do not covet. That's it. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced <laughs> in me every kind of covetous desires. For apart from law, sin is dead. Wow. This brings to us to a very difficult place. But let's go back to verse 1 of the same chapter. Let me read it. Or do you not know chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, verse 1? Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. You are hearing that? Yeah, must hear you. The law has dominion over man for as long as he lives. Sheria iko na mamulaka kwa madamu tu anapoishi. If you do a criminal act, Ukifanya kitendo ambacho ni kiovu and the police are looking for you na askari wanakutafuta then they find you dead na wanapata umekufa and they drag your body to the judge watabeba mwili wako wapelekee hakimu for as long as you are dead the law has no power over you sheria haina uwezo juu yako let me give you where you are go- we are going wacha nikupatie mahali tunapoelekea the very moment you believe in Christ Jesus 
Punde tu unapoamini Yesu Kristo you die to the world unaikufia ulimwengu and now you are hidden in Christ na unafichwa ndani ya Kristo and when you are hidden in Christ na ukifichwa ndani ya Kristo the law and sin have no power over you sheria na dhambi hazina uwezo juu yako amen but let's walk there slowly lakini hapo twende pole pole i'm showing you the trophy na kuonesha karama ama mm, taji yeah so, so that we can have encouragement as we run there ili kwamba ukuwe na mutisha wa kufika hapo When Christ died on the cross, we died with him on the cross. When he was buried, we were buried with him. When he rose, we rose with him. We live in a new life that is beyond the law and sin. But let's walk there slowly. Eh? So the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. Sheria iko tu na hali ya kutamaraki mwanadamu mwanadamu tu anapoishi. Verse 2. Mstari wa pili. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. Mwanamke aliye na mume amefungwa na sheria kwa yule mume wakati anapokuwa yuhai. Bali akifa yule mume amefunguliwa ile sheria ya mume. So a, a woman is married. Mwanamke ameolewa. She knows that she cannot have two husbands. Anajua kwamba haizi kuwa na ume wawili. As long as the first husband is alive. Kwa sababu ile ya kwanza yuko hai. Even if she has been admiring in her, in her heart. Hata kama ndani ya moyo wake amekuwa kimtamani. To have another husband. Akuwe na mume mwingine. She knows her still, my husband is still alive. Na anajua mume wake yuko hai. But if the husband dies. Lakini punde tu mume wake anapokufa. He is buried. Kabla hajazikwa. <laughs> Does it happen? Je, wewe natendeka? Where I come from it happens sometimes. Huko kwao nyumbani wanatendeka. Until you wonder. Mpaka unashangaa. When did they know each other? Wali jua na jirini hapa. Because this man was buried yesterday. Huyu ameziko tu jana. And she's coming to church she says I cannot stay like that I'm feeling lonely. Nasema kanisa mimi siwezi kaa hivyo nasikia nasikia baridi. Umetoa huyu mtu wapi? Huyu mtu ya Kumbe when the husband was alive. Kumbe wakati mume alipokuwa hai. She was wishing this man if he only died I'd marry this one. Alikuwa anaona kama tu huyu anaweza ondoka. Huyu ni mzuri. So verse 3. wa tatu. So then if while her husband lives she marries another man she will be called an adulteress but if her husband dies she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress though she has married another man. Basi wakati wakati awapo hai mumewe kama akiwa na mume mwingine huitwa mzinzi ila mumewe akifa amekuwa nhuru hafungwi na sheria hiyo hata yeye mzi, hata yeye si mzinzi ajapoolewa na mume mwingine wakati huyo jamaa amekufa basi huyo yako huru fungua macho yako angalia mstari waende vizuri therefore my brethren you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another to him who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God Kadhalika ndugu zangu nyinyi pia mmefia torati kwa njia ya mwili wa Kristo mpate kuwa mali ya mwingine yeye aliyefufuka katika wafu kusudi tu mzalie Mungu matunda. So an afternoon session. Masaya yale ya mchana baada ya chakula cha mchana. I'll show you how we relate to Christ Jesus. Tutaangalia jinsi tunavyohusiana na Kristo Yesu. But I want you to know. Lakini ningependa ujue. The moment you believe in Christ. Punde tunapoamini Yesu Kristo you are dead to the law umekufia sheria the law no longer has power over you sheria haina uwezo tena juu ya maisha yako na sasa you are free to get married to jesus christ now uhuru kuolewa na mume yesu kristo but while you are still under the law lakini ukiwa chini ya sheria you can never be married to christ jesus hauwezi olewa na kristo yesu you can't have two husbands hauwezi kuwa na ume wawili you must choose who your husband is lazima uchague mume wako ni nani either moses iwe ni musa or christ ama Kristo. Who is your husband? Ni nani mume wako? Kama usawa watu, who is your husband? Nani mume wako? You must choose. Lazima uchague vizuri. If you have Moses, kama uko na Musa, and you are going out with Jesus, unaenda na Yesu, you are an adulterer. Wewe ni mzinzi. I can say like a prophet that says the Lord. Naweza sema kama nabii hivyo ndivyo asema Bwana. And you are getting married to Jesus. Na unaolewa na Yesu. Why? Kwa nini? Look at verse 4 again. Angalia mstari wa 4 tena. Give us verse 4. Give us verse 4 in Swahili. Kadhalika ndugu zangu ninyi pia mmeifia torati kwa njia ya mwili wa Kristo mpate kuwa mali ya mwingine yeye aliyefufuka katika wafu kusudi tumzalie Mungu matunda 
Me I like these verses. Mpate kuwa mali ya mungine. Asa we ni mali ya nani? Yes. Ya Musa ama wa Yesu. Ya yeah, Yesu. Na kushia kuwa mali ya Yesu Kristo. Unafaya nini? Unamzalia mungu matunda. Praise God. Amen. Lakini uwezi kuwa mali ya Musa na umzalia mungu matunda. Nuketi uka kiedu wa Yesu, nusi ya rilega ima siyaro. Kanisa lazima tuamue. No kinya idwe kanitha. Tukimwamini Yesu Kristo. Tuwezi kia Yesu Kristo. Na kufa kwa loko wa sharia. Na kuherira wadho. Galatians chapter 3. Tukaratia mulango wa tatu. Pole pole tu. Ukahora. Look at verse 13. Mistari wa kumina tatu. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Kristo alitukomboa katika alaana ya torati kwa kuwa alifanywa alaana kwa ajili yetu maana imeandikwa amelaaniwa ame, ame kila mtu angekwae juu ya mti. Now hear this. Sikiza hii. In the law of Moses, katika torati ya Musa, there was prescription for punishment if you break the law. Kulikuwa na hali ya kuelezea vile utakavyoadhibiwa ukivunja sheria. And the punishment due when you break the law, na adhabu hiyo ya kuvunja sheria is called the curse of the law. Ilikuwa inaitwa alaana Everywhere in the Bible, mahali, Biblia, in the Old Testament, kare, when you see the word cast, kitu it's because you have broken one of the laws. Mevunji, now, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, Christo, you can go through your Bible Biblia, and cancel the word cast and say blessed. Na useme, because Jesus Christ Christo, became a curse on our behalf. When he was crucified at the cross, Alipo msarabani, he became a curse on our behalf. Every curse prescribed in the law Kila laana mba was laid upon him on the cross. Jua so that when you believe in him, ye, you can never be cursed for breaking any law. Milele na milele. If any man stands before you Kama kuja kwako, and tells you you are cursed, melaniwa, tell him I'm blessed. Because the Bible says nasema, you have the power in Esai chapter 54 verse 17 wa nne, wa na nne, saba, that you have the power to refuse every tongue ulimi, that rises against you in judgment. So if a man stands before you and says you are cursed asembe umelaniwa, or you will be cursed tell him I am blessed in Christ Jesus. Yesu. There are no curses in Christ. Curses are found in uh, Moses. Curses are found in Adam. But if you are in Christ Jesus, Christo, you are no longer in Adam. We ni Adam, we have curses. Adam lana. In Christ, you have blessings. If you are here and you are born again, then you are in Christ. Basi Christo, we have people who are born again here. Eh? Then shout, I am in Christ. Sema, mimi ni kundani, shout, I am in Christ. Mimi ni kundani, Christo. And you need to know in Christ, na, lazima ujue ndani ya Christo, there are no curses. Laana. If someone comes to tell you, kwa although you are born again, but in Christ you have curses, I want to deliver you, tell him wrong address. By tomorrow I have showed you all that. Tell him wrong address. Many people outside here, they are earning their living out of the ignorance of the church. We don't understand the blessings we have in Christ Jesus. So a man comes and tells you, although you are born again, you have been delivered by Christ, you are preserved by Christ, you are healed by Christ, you are protected by Christ, but I am the mighty man of God able to do what God was not able to do in your life. Tell him wrong address. Try the next door. That's why I'm here. And I love that silence. So in a, we finish here. We're going for lunch in the next five minutes. Let's, let's just go quickly in Galatians chapter 3. Let's pick it from verse oh boy. Hmm. Let's begin from verse 22. Let me read it for so that we finish quickly. Galatians chapter 3. I'll read from verse 19, but I'll pick a few verses to comment on. From verse 19, the Bible says, What purpose then does the law serve? 
it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Torati ni nini basi? Iliingizwa kwa sababu ya makosa hata aje huyo mzao aliyepewa ile ahadi iliamuliwa kwa utumishi wa malaika kwa mkono wa ujumbe wa mjumbe. Listen to this. Sikiza hii. And it will solve most of the questions we are having. Na itatatua maswali yote ambayo tunasema. Why did God give Moses the law to the nation of Israel? Mungu alimpatia Torati Musa kwa nini? It's because all men were sinners. Kwa sababu watu wote walikuwa ni wenye dhambi. And God had no uh, basis of judging sin. Na Mungu hakuwa na njia nyingine ya kuhukumu dhambi. The only man who was who sinned and God had a basis of judging him. Yule mtu ambaye aliyefanya dhambi na Mungu alikuwa na njia ya kumhukumu. Is Adam. Alikuwa ni Adam. Because God told him don't eat. Mungu alimwambia usile. And he ate. Na akala. Then all men became Sinners. But how will God judge you because you never ate in the garden of Eden? Lakini wewe Mungu atakukumwaje na ukula ile tunda. And you carry the sin nature. Na uko na asili ya dhambi. You are living a sinful life. Unaishi maisha ya dhambi. So God has to show you. Mungu lazima akuonyeshe. That you are a sinner. Wewe ni mwenye dhambi. You need to be judged. Unaendelea kuhukumiwa. But God wants to save you. Lakini Mungu atapia ukuo. So he brings the law. Kwa hivyo analeta sheria. For you to break the law. Ili uvunje sheria. So that you can know you are a sinner. Ili ujue ni mwenye dhambi. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions till if you have a bible underline that word till or until i don't know torati, till torati ni nini basi iliingizwa kwa sababu ya ile kosa verse 19 mstari wa 19 galatians 3:19 iliingizwa ili ili iliingizwa kwa sababu ya makosa hata aje huyo mzao hata aje so the law was to serve sheria ilikuwa itumike till hadi kuna bible zetu the law was to serve sheria ilikuwa itumike till the seed comes hadi mbegu ikuje who is the seed mbegu naye alikuwa ni nani in genesis chapter 3 verse 15 basi pale tu mlango wa 3 mstari wa 16 the devil was told shetani akaambiwa you think you have outwitted god unafikiri wewe umemshinda mungu and misled man away na umemtawanya mwanadamu but the seed of the woman ni mbegu ya mwanamke shall crush your head itakonga kichwa chako who is the seed of the woman ni mbegu ya mwanamke is jesus christ yes. Christo. So the, the law was added kwa hivyo sheria iliongezwa to regulate man ili kwamba iongoze mwanadamu until Christ Jesus is born hadi Kristo aweze kuzaliwa when Christ comes wakati Kristo anapo the law has finished its work sheria imemaliza kazi yake underline till andika hapo chini mkururo useme hadi um, let me go to verse 21 is the law then against the promises of God verse 21 certainly not for If there had been a law given which could have given life truly righteousness would have been by the law. Mm -hmm. So is the law bad? Yesheria ni mbaya? No, the law is not bad. Si mbaya. The law is not against God. Sheria iko dhidi ya Mungu. God who gave the law to Moses. Ni Mungu alipatia Musa sheria. So God cannot give to Moses. Mungu hawezi mpatia Mungu. Something is against him. Kitu ambacho iko dhidi yake. Then what is wrong with the law? Sheria ishida yake ni nini? The law cannot give life. Sheria haiwezi kupeana uzima. It's only Jesus who gives life. Yesu tu hupeana uzima. And the Bible says, if the law could have given life. Kama sheria ingepeana uzima. If the law could have made man righteous. Kama sheria ingefanya mtu kuwa haki. There was no need for Christ to come. Hakuwa na haja Yesu But because the law could not make man righteous. Jesus had to come. Yes, lazima angeikuja. Yes, but to God. Amen. Verse 22. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So, the law has put the whole world. Sheria imeweka ulimwengu wote under sin. Chini ya dhambi. Why? Kwa nini? That when Christ comes. Wakati Kristo anapokuja. You believe in him. Umwamini yeye. You are set free from sin. Unakuwa kwa kutoka kwa dhambi. So the law. Sheria. If you are listening say amen. Kama unasikiza sema amina. What the law did. Sheria ilifanya nini? It took every human being to commit prison. Ilichukua kila mwanadamu akampeleka kwa gereza ya kamiti. So that when Christ comes ili kwamba Kristo anapokuja you, you will be told a door has been opened in your prison. Atambua mlango umefunguliwa katika gereza yako. Do you want to remain in prison? Utaoka ndani ya gereza. Use that door and get out. Kama utumie mlango utoke nje. So the law is good. Sheria ni nzuri. Because it preserved us in prison. Kwa sababu ilihifadhi katika jela until Christ comes. Hadi Kristo akaje. When Christ comes, wakati Kristo anapokuja, he rescues us. Akatuokoa. He saves us. Akatuokoa. He delivers us. Akatukomboa. From danger to safety. Kutoka kwa hatari kwa mahali pa salama. Once and forever. Mara moja na ya mwisho. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Look at verse 23. Mstari wa 23. But before faith came, we were kept 
under guard by the law kept for the faith which will afterwards be revealed. Now, I'm just going quickly because I want to finish this part before we go for lunch. Before faith came. So in the Old Testament, there was no faith. Uh -huh. Let us think. The law is not believed. The law is obeyed. It is Christ who is believed. So before Christ came, before faith came, you get it? Before Christ came, there was no faith. Faith begins at the cross of Calvary. That's when you hear, for God so loved the whole world. That he gave his one and only begotten son. That whosoever believes shall not perish but have eternal life. Without Calvary, without Christ, there is nothing like belief. It is obey. Verse 23 says, but before faith came, so faith came. Amen? Before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which will afterward be revealed. Now let's go to verse 24. Now if you, know, you have not been listening, listen to this verse 24. And I want, us, I, want to, I want us to read it in many different Bibles. Look at verse 24. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law was our tutor. What does your Bible say? The law was the law is a schoolmaster. The law is kiongozi. Read for us in Swahili down there. Nasema, if your torati imekuwa kiongozi, imekuwa kiongozi, kutuleta kwa kristo, inakupeleka pali wapi kwa kristo, ili tuesabia haki kwa imani. Wow. The law is what? Our tutor. Our schoolmaster. Sharia likuwa nini? Nini kiongozi mkuu wa shule. The law is taking us to who? to Christ. Kwa Christo. So, it is not bad for the church to be under the law. Si vibaya kanisa kuwa chini ya sheria. For as long as the church knows. Kama vile kanisa navyo jua. Under the law we are without Christ. Kwa mba chini ya chini ya sheria hatuna Christo. But the law is leading us to Christ. Lakini sheria inatuongoza kwa Christo. Anyone who wants to take away the church from Christ, you put the church under the law of Moses. Look at verse 25. Read verse 25. Lakini, iwapo imani imekuja, hatupo tena chini ya kiongozi. Sisi watu wa imani ama watu wa sharia. Ipu semeni tu, na imani kama imekuja, hatupo tena chini ya those two verses. Those two verses. Verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 in a sema. Nyo do shio. Wado neguo. Wahe iruo oho ti wago to toara. Oto toara. Ito pelekes, isn't it? Ah, very good. Oto toara kore Christo. Neguo to tuo adhigu na odo wago etekia. Aha. Nare ere. Kona tere u ohora wago etekia ne mokinyu. Aha. Let's make a choice. Go to chapter 5. Chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Inasema katika ungwana huo, Kristo alituandika nuhuru kwa hiyo smameni wala musinaswe tena chini ya kongwa na utumwa. Kongwa na utumwa nini yo? Sharia. Kristo nego tuwa hora atu wa horire. Neguwa togie na weyadi. Nyo doshi yore. Mwe hade yuega. Na mutige tekire kuwa huo ishoki. Rea okobo rege. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. So chapter 10 the Bible says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Now listen to that. 
Kisa hiyo. Paul is praying for Israel to be saved. Paul anaongea anaambia Israeli waweze kuokolewa. But they are the keepers of the law. Lakini hao ndio wanahifadhi sheria. They are the recipients of the prophecies. Hao ndio walipokea unabii. They are the ones with the Levitical priesthood. Hao ndio walipokea unabii wakiwaki wakilawi. They are the ones that have kings. Hao ndio wako na wafalme. As judges. Hao ndio wako na mahakimu. So these things did not save them. Kwa hivyo mambo haikuwaokoa. The law never saved them. The prophecies never saved them. The Levitical priesthood never saved them. Paul is praying for Israel that they may be saved. Paul says verse 2 for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. That you see them working very hard. They slaughter animals. They observe days. They sacrifice. They dress in sackcloths. You look at them, you see zeal. But not according to the knowledge that the Bible gives. Because zeal is not a proof of righteousness. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted the righteousness of God. So the nation of Israel, they don't know the righteousness of God. They don't want to submit the righteousness of God. So what they have done, they have established their own righteousness. In our denomination we do this. We don't care what the Bible says. In our denomination we do this. We are one body of Christ. And we have only one body of faith. If every denomination was to come up with the body of faith. Then Jesus died for no reason. People have established their own standards of righteousness. Watu wamedhibiti viwango vyao vya haki. In our church. Katika makanisa. In our denomination. Katika dini zetu. Israel was the same. Hata Israeli pia alikuwa hivyo. They say we don't know the righteousness of God. Hatujui haki ya Mungu. We don't care about it. Hatujali. We will come up with our own. Tutaibuni yetu. And that is very true up to today. All over the world, people don't want what the Bible says. They want what their religion says. There must be a people who will say we will come out of religion and do what the word of God says. The sacrifice. Because, because you will look like you are wrong. You may be the only one but you look like you are the only one who is wrong. But you must stand out and say if the Bible does not say so I will not do it. Now let's read verse 4. Mustari wane nasema kwa mana Christo ni mwisho wa sheria ili kila aminie ayesabiwe aki. It preserved us. But when it brings you to Christ Jesus, the law has finished its work. Jesus takes over. We will see in the afternoon. We will see in the afternoon. But you will discover that we have something bigger more glorious in Christ than the law of Moses. You are blessed. Amen. Dear friend, you may have watched this message and yet you are not born again. It's not an accident, but God's plan. All you need to do now is believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross and settled the penalty for all your sins. When you rely only on this finished work, you become the righteousness of God because all your sins are forgiven. You become a child of God with all the rights of a son. You will never ever perish because you have eternal life, the very life of God. You're welcome to worship with us every Sunday from 10 a.m. We are located at Umoja Inako Estate, along Moi Drive, directly opposite the Umoja 2 Chief's Office, Nairobi, Kenya, 